Well met Lawson awesome ladies, Jacob Butter speaking in a wet wet welcome to this week's Walking Wednesday. It's actually not that wet but uh, it may end up being at some point so I, uh, I came prepared. But yeah this is uh, if you can't tell I'm a little bit low energy. Again whatever bug seems to be affecting my family recently just seems to be going ups and downs for everyone. I, for the longest time, have had what I'm guessing is going to be the um, the mild version of whatever my parents had and possibly my brother for like a couple of days. He just went back to work today, but yeah, at least yesterday and potentially the day before, uh, he was off and uh, indisposed. And... Uh, and yeah, everyone's been uh, not necessarily keeping their distance from each other, but you know, uh, minimal proximity, I suppose. Except on occasion. Maybe that occasion was enough? I don't know. And for the record, uh, my mum and dad have tested. It isn't COVID. Uh, at least not to my knowledge, anyway. Because, I mean, for crying out loud, I went to Harry Potter World two days ago after they got the tests. So I'm, I'm pretty sure if, uh, if any of us, ha if any, either of those two had COVID, they would have mentioned by now. So yeah, that's, uh, I think we're, I think we're good in that regard. But yeah. Uh, I guess for Harry Potter World itself, I was actually, uh, well, I don't know if it was the uh, euphoria mixed with the adrenaline of, uh, you know, being back there, but yeah, I was, I was okay up until the moment that, uh, that my cousins left. Well, I say my cousins, my cousin, his wife, and their daughter, technically, although I preferred to that daughter as my cousin multiple times, including in the, uh, I say recent, uh, Toka Life World video. It was filmed five months ago, but, uh, it's recent to me. Uh, well, recently published, anyway. If you don't remember, I did a part one of, uh, what even is Toka Life World a while ago, because, uh, that cousin's daughter specifically, uh, taught me about it, and... Well, here, there, there, I, I decided to give it a look. Um, and not only that, but also, uh, but, but also I, I, I ran out of, um, of time. I was going to edit those both the videos put together into one, but I decided against that partly because uh, said cousin has a very <laughs> short attention span in keeping with the iPad generation. I'm kidding, she's not that bad, but I mean, she skipped around the videos a lot, so I put chapters on the second one. Uh, but also because I knew that on the day that the part one came out, I was also going to see her again. And so that was, uh, uh, and so I put that up uh, on that day. Um, so I thought, well, I have something in time. I had a lot of render issues with that video as well trying to put those bits together. I'm not sure what that was about, really. But uh, there you have it. And also a test to see how, um, how Gling AI worked a lot of the time, which uh, it did. It worked just fine. Uh, that was not the part that was the issue. If anything, it's progressive updates uh, keep making that, that program better because now I don't even have to worry about um, you could even trim out sections apart from going exclusively through the uh, transcribed text at the time. And now you can, so kind of working like a very basic rudimentary uh, editing program before you apply all of the real effects, I suppose, in other places. That's for Vegas users like myself. Speaking of that, uh, I guess that's a good way to get back into um, talking about Harry Potter World because uh, one of the things that happened while I was there this time was uh, at some point uh, 
my cousin's wife, or mother, depending on which cousin we're talking about, um, mentioned that mentioned that uh, someone, ha one of the employees, had mentioned has said to her that what that there is a, a reason that, for example, the Slytherin and versus Ravenclaw Quidditch matches uh, never uh, we never saw them together. I mean, of course, the real reason is because only. <laughs> Only the Gryffindor matches ever seem to count for anything, because you never see another house just play each other, or it's never you know, it's described in the books or anything. Uh, but the real reason is because you can imagine that um, Sorry. you can imagine that uh, for whatever whatever Slytherin was playing, they would use uh, they would use blue screen. And whatever Ravenclaw was playing, uh, they would use green screen, so they couldn't use both. Which now raises the question, the more that I think about that, the more I'm, I'm considering, hold on. When did Ravenclaw ever actually play a match in the movies? At all, in fact. I mean, Slytherin did, obviously, that was the first one we ever saw. Uh, but... In fact, isn't there like archival footage of Daniel Radcliffe and Tom Felton on green screen together? I'm trying, I'm forgetting. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's bizarre because, I mean, of course, the, the one, the one Quidditch match I think that was important that wasn't Gryffindor versus Slytherin that we ever saw in the movies was, of course, Gryffindor versus Hufflepuff in Prisoner of Azkaban. The one that was supposed to induce Cedric Diggory, but was never, you know, confirmed by name. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know about that. But, uh, yeah, there was no reason for. I guess they would have used green screen maybe for that, because the because the broom, because they they have a thing there where you can where you can like get your own like broomstick video and such and I've uh, shown some pictures of me on that that was green screened and <laughs> and it has been since the uh, since the inception of that particular uh, well it's not since the inception maybe since at least 10 years ago because I remember my 14th birthday I was uh, I was there at Harry Potter World for the first time did the broomstick ride then and had to actually cover up um the bright green Minecraft t-shirt that I had all the time. <laughs> but, so, so yeah. The uh, reason I, I wonder about that is because, I mean, yes, it's an issue when you, when you want to do a Sin vs. Raiding Claw, in theory, because of the house colours, but, but actually, I just thought whenever I said, when I said that, I said, oh, they couldn't work out a way. I said, and I thought in my head, I know a way. Because I do. In fact, the way that the broomsticks seem to work, at least from what I know, is that they don't actually move in studio. So everyone is moved separately. Surely that means that you could technically use one studio one day and another studio another day, or maybe even both at the same time, depending on like how that was laid out. So I don't know. And put everyone there in just different layers and such. I mean, even, even back then, I know that I'm talking about the perspective as a video editor, you know, yeah, you know, 20-odd years on from, uh, from the original movies, with well, the first one, you know, you know, from 10 to 15-ish, whatever, for the others. Um, but still, that kind of seems like a thing that they would have uh, definitely worked out by that stage. In fact, one of the... I, I believe I, I remember this... What, the first time that any sort of, what we would call uh, chroma key now, I guess, whatever, you know, screening would, would have happened in the past, uh, was actually yellow screening. Because uh, in, the, in the Wizard of Oz, the 1939 movie, uh, the, if, if people have seen that movie, there's a scene where the tornado happens, and we see briefly the Wicked Witch of the East. 
I think it might be like a lady on a bike and then turns into the Wicked Witch of the East on a broom or something like that before the house hits her, whatever. Um, so before that scene, well during that scene, she's just flying there in the middle of this tornado, like a maelstrom of wind and such. And what they did for that, if my information is correct, is they had her on a particular like piece of um that well they well I mean they had a yellow screen, but it was specifically a type of yellow that they knew if it was lit a certain way, it would appear invisible on film. And that was the first uh example of yellow screening. Maybe there was another use of it beforehand or something. I don't particularly know. But yeah, that was um That was the thing. So uh so so yeah, like not only does yellow did yellow screening exist longer than blue screening and green screening has, uh but also again different layers. So I was confused by that personally. But you know, the rest of it, of course. I mean, how could it not be a fun day? Now, I have gone to Harry Potter World uh, now a total of three times. Uh, all of which by invitation, coincidentally. Uh, well, well, one was by surprise. Because my, my 14th birthday, we travelled up to London. They didn't tell me where we were going. And they only said it was a place uh, based on a thing that I, that I like. Then I saw Warner Brothers Studios. I saw... I think one of the logos or something it's like oh wow this is uh well we are i don't even know that the place existed to be honest so if people haven't been it's where they have a lot of uh uh props costumes you know uh other things from the actual movies and you get to go through it and it is a uh, a semi-immersive experience it's also one of the uh two places or three places in the world where you can get butterbeer uh, so it's one of those other things. There's, in fact, there's a separate queue for one of those, in fact. Uh, and I've now introduced a Butterbeer ice cream, Butterbeer pancakes, and a Butterbeer blondie. Uh, I tried a sip of the ice cream because the, uh, the young cousin managed to, uh, order that instead. Because, I mean, she'd been there before, also, uh, two other separate occasions. One of which she was apparently, uh, she was apparently three. I won't say when, how long ago that was, obviously, because I'll give it away. Uh, but yeah, so she was too young to remember that. But yeah, um, in the case, in, in my case, yeah, 14th birthday was the first time. Then I think it was, uh, it was either a year or two later. Uh, the, 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 my secondary school's library club uh, invited me along because they had a, a journey about that. Which, I mean, already, I guess, because, you know, book to film, you know, there's still crossover. Um, but I was not a member of the library club. What I was, was, uh, <laughs> was the school's resident Harry Potter kid. Yeah, I don't people remember that, uh, my live performance video from like six years ago probably not but that's the evidence that i have of the first full parody that i ever wrote which was a parody of uh, gangnam style back when that was still trending uh, called harry potter style and i did that about i don't know like a month or so into being at this new school so it kind of very much cemented because I mean, I want to say it went viral. It went viral in the school itself. I didn't have a channel at that point. That's how long ago it was. Uh, but people would stop me in the halls almost every single day to sing that song. Now, some of them may have been mocking me, but a lot of them just really enjoyed that. And there were people who would talk about it on whenever there was like a crossover with the local radio station. The first time I got mentioned on the radio ever, I think, was was talking about Harry Potter style. And yeah, eventually by the end of the first year, 
I was so sick of it that I just said flat out, I'm not seeing this ever again. Then I moved on to making Minecraft parodies, eventually books and blah, 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 and presentation songs. And then Carbon Cycle happened the year after that. And that was uh, not as big, but it's the one that people most knew me for back in the day. And I've showed some people uh, a few versions of Carbon Cycle that I did. They got more of a cheer in the live performance day than uh, Harry Potter style did. Oh, I also performed Harry Potter style for, um, for uh, the uh, school's got talent, actually. That, uh, you know, in name of school, he has got talent. Uh, and uh, supposedly, because I was in the finals, I was supposed to go to uh, Sorry Schools Have Talent, which was the actual other round or something, but we never went to that. I don't know why we didn't. Uh, I found out later that because of the prefix, arranged the competition, so maybe I was supposed to ask them and not the drama teacher, who was the official person in charge of the event. I don't really know. Uh, but yeah, that never happened, but it almost did. I almost performed that song with the group uh, during a, uh, a regional competition. That's how, uh, that's how big it still was, even like, by this point I was 2014, so two years on, two calendar years, one school year. But yeah, and that was not even mentioning how the end of my first year I decided to try and induce uh, my own version of Quidditch into the school, which the first PE teacher was like, oh yeah, you sort this all out. The second one, because he left that year, then another new head of staff came in and he was all for it. He was very excited that that was a, a new concept. And, you know, he went off to like referee the first and eventually the only match. And yeah, and he also asked me at one point for the Duke of Edinburgh Awards to give an actual speech towards a bunch of schools about uh, floor quidditch, as I called it. Because Muggle Quidditch, the name existed at the time. It's now called Quad Ball because, you know, the sport itself is a dead name. So, <laughs> but yeah, it didn't catch on outside of the school. It was very contained, but the PG was so excited about it. And, and he was just like, wow, okay, let's, let's do, let's, let's do this thing. Uh, so yeah. I need to get out of here to find a place with uh, more shelter. But, uh, so, uh, yeah, I told the story about, like, that particular, um, speech and such. But, yeah, basically, by that time, I was known as the Harry Potter kid, so it took me a second time. And now a third time, because, uh, there's a, there's a new Harry Potter kid, the younger cousin. I remember when I first found out that, uh, I think during lockdown that she had, uh, developed that particular taste. I think it was before, a little before lockdown, actually. I was like, yes! <laughs> so... So yeah, that was, uh, so yeah, we had that day, we took a bunch of photos, which I can't show, obviously. Um, and, uh, you know, we quizzed each other on the way, uh, there, back, back and forth. They have this thing now where you're supposed to, like, hunt, uh, Cornish Pixies and Golden Snitches across the, across the area. And, uh, yeah, my goodness, that was, uh, that was a time... So yeah, then afterwards, you know, naturally after all of that, you know, after the car journey, they, you know, they, they stayed for a bit, they had a cup of tea, then eventually left, and pretty much as soon as that happened, I started to feel the fatigue, and uh, I crashed, and I've had bursts of energy, because I've done some voice acting and one recording session, but yeah, and a driving lesson actually as well. So that's why I still haven't uh, quite recovered. So people are saying, oh yeah, people will take a toll on you. That's why I haven't streamed a lot, by the way. I left them, um, it was a mistake to stream so soon, like on the day, because I hadn't registered that something was happening to me at that point. And then I have to keep leaving to blow my nose midstream. So yeah, I mean, I want to be back tonight, ideally because you know, 
watch hours, although seemingly the watch hours have been mostly fine with just Pixelmon, uh, surprisingly. Uh, but yeah, every time I think I'm going to go down significantly, I'm like, wow, this is actually, I'm actually doing okay. Still a little bit better than last year around this time. I'm keeping track because again, I'm worried about getting to May because May is the time, again, I started spamming and if I don't have a significant advantage, uh, I'm doomed. So yeah. That's not even to mention the fact that, uh, yeah, during a uh, off times I'm like, well, I'm checking out uh, Toka Life World a lot more now. See if I can work certain things out. Turns out a few of the uh, people who've, I've looked at some channels that have, uh, you know, the Toka Tubers, I suppose they would be called. And they're actually, they're actually doing some uh, decent things with uh, Toka Life. They're not just as many of, uh, you know, recording from the other side of the screen with uh, the voice. It's weird, because Toka Life World, I haven't mentioned this. I might do a Toka review at some point, just to emphasize this point. But, yeah, they, um, they seem to, um, when, when, when Garcha started without much voice acting, Toka doesn't have, to my knowledge, speech bubbles or anything. So people haven't been doing screenshots, they've been doing actual voicing. And Toka, Bo Toka Boka, the company, uh, brands themselves as making digital toys. So I guess, you know, people do most of the time uh, use the app uh, like they would toys. So that kind of makes sense. It's weird how Tokub has like it. I, I compared to Gacha on a, on the way that it exists currently in its rudimentary form. Even though I found that was actually possibly even older than Gacha. So, hmm. but yeah, as far as the community goes, it's just like the same way that Gacha did a few years ago. You know, before the heat wave, I suppose. But there are some differences. I'll um, aim to explore this at some point. I'm running out of space. I was going to talk about the uh, the uh, short new wedding and such because uh, I found out about that this week, but there's no time anymore and I don't want to extend this because I had to get back and actually rest. Today was supposed to be the day we recorded more Pixelmon too, so because Shiny's back. Well, we'll see. For now, please leave a like or dislike because your opinion matters. So I've already. And on that note, until next time, farewell.